Hello my Funatics and welcome to Newcastle United's debut in the PPL. It's season 3 and this is our first match. Very excited to bring it to you. I'm facing off against RTK, the manager of the Portland Timbers. I'm sorry it's a little late. Uh, if you are on Twitter, you'd know that I had a hectic week last week. I had... Uh, at the beginning of the week, I found out that I got through to an assessment center for a job that I applied for, and that assessment center was only two days later, so I had very little time to prepare. I was working all week as it was, um, and I had to travel halfway across the country as well. So um, it was a very, very busy week, and this battle only actually happened late last night. Uh, so I'm bringing it to you as soon as I can, and I hope that you appreciate that. I want to do team builder videos in the future, but obviously this week I haven't had time to do so. So I'd quite like to do that, that at the beginning of this video. It actually comes into play in this match and I think it would be quite interesting to see for you to see my uh, thought processes when going into this match. Uh, but if you just want to see the battle, then that's fine. I'll link that in the description and I'll, I'll maybe put it on screen or something for you to click on and it'll take you to straight to the match. But for those awesome people who want to find out what goes through my crazy brain, then just stay tuned. So, looking at the opponent's roster, the first thing that I did, and the first thing that I'll probably do most weeks, is see how much damage Tyrantrum can do, because that thing is a monster, and if, if the opponent is not prepared for it, it's probably going to be an easy sweep. So that was the first thing I did, and actually the Portland Timbers have a relatively good stop to that, uh, which is Donphan. Donphan is a really good switch in on Tyrantrum, I, it really can't do very much. Uh, but that is pretty much the only thing they have and that's pretty good for me. I thought that if I can build a team around getting rid of Donphan, then Tyrantrum will have a great time. I'll be able to do so much damage and that was the game plan going into it. So Tyrantrum is the first one that uh, sealed a place on my team and I, it was going, going into it, it was kind of in my head as the win condition. So yeah, it will just do massive damage and it can set up for the sweep at the end uh, if I get the opportunity. So the first thing that I thought would be good support for it uh, was actually Nida Queen, and that's because it carries the hazards. Now, Donphan, obviously if you're going to bring Donphan, I would expect people to bring a rapid spinning Donphan. That's basically what it does. He does have Mandibuzz as hazard removal, which is probably more effective hazard removal. But if Donphan's coming, then you put rapid spin on it. And I doubt that he'd bring two forms of hazard removal. So bringing hazards puts pressure on Donphan to come out and spin. And while he's out, it means that I can damage it and I can then whittle this uh, counter to my Tyrantrum so that Tyrantrum can then sweep. And what's especially good is that the Portland Timbers don't have a poison type, so if I get to toxic spikes up, it means that Donphan will have to get poison to spin them away. So that's really good. To uh, Donphan taking residual damage is fantastic. It doesn't have any recovery um, and it will eventually die. So that's fantastic. So toxic spikes were definitely going to go on my Nida Queen set. Stealth Rock as well because it helps whittle the opponent's bulky team. Uh, especially Rotom H will take a lot of damage from that. And again, it puts even more pressure on Donphan to spin. So that those two were guaranteed. I wanted my hazards. And then I just went with Dual Stab. Uh, that was decided at the end, just seeing what coverage I lacked. And really, Dual Stab was fine. Um, and I went with a more specially defensive set, just so that I could uh, switch in on Rotom to set all the things up, because... Yeah, it's, Rotom would be a really nice switch in for this thing. And I went special so that if I got burned, it doesn't matter. Um, so that was basically my Nida Queen. The next thing I brought uh, was another thing thinking about trying to get rid of Donphan. I wanted to bring my Blastoise because it's got really good defense and it hits super hard. I wanted Rapid Spin on my team. Um, not that my team is particularly weak to rocks apart from one thing, which I'll go into in a minute. Uh, but... I wanted Rapid Spin just to make sure that I didn't get stacked upon or anything like that. I didn't want rocks on my side of the field. Uh, and Scold was the offensive option just to do big damage to Donphan really and maybe catch a burn on something if I don't have my spikes up. Uh, in retrospect, Water Pulse, I know it's cheeky but it does a bit more damage and it can confuse and actually that might have been better. Uh, just because I get, for this set, Shaman is a very easy switch in and I really can't do very much to stop that. Uh, I wanted Rest and Sleep Talk on there. I really Rest just to keep Blastoise around because I wanted a Rapid Spinner around. 
Um, but yeah, I, I can't do anything to tame in. If I, I could have maybe fit Ice Beam on there, which would have been good. Uh, or alternatively, as I was saying, um, yeah, just, I don't know, Water Pulse to maybe get the Confusion would have been more beneficial than the Scold. I went with Defensive because then this Blastoise can also act as a counter pretty much to uh, Bishop. Bishop does very little damage. Knockoff is only base 65 power against it. We resist Iron Head. If it had low kick, low kick will do a bit more damage. Uh, but Scold is doing huge damage to a non-bulky uh, Bishop. I definitely thought Bishop was coming because it puts in the work against my team. So I needed a good answer to it. And basically this guy is a very good answer to Bishop. So I wanted rest on there because I knew I'd be taking damage maybe from Bishop, maybe from switching in on Earthquakes on the Don fan, but it, it gives a lot of pressure against some of the things that I want to put pressure against, so that's great. So as I said, I was a bit worried about Shaman, but having this guy as a very reliable rapid spin, it meant that I could bring Talonflame as a very nice Shaman answer. Now Talonflame was not going to be a sweeper this match. Uh, it, the opponent has Don fan and also Rotom Heat, which is one of the best Talonflame uh, counters in the game. So this set uh, was definitely more of a supporting set and as a switch in for Shaman because Shaman could easily switch in on Blastoise. Uh, so that was the idea behind this. But what I really like about this is it, it functions more than that. It's a specially defensive Talonflame set and it can take on other things like the Gudra maybe a bit and other stuff. Um, but what's cool is I've got Taunt on there. If you look at the opponent's team, he's got some things like uh, Bishop that can set up but also a lot of things um, that can get recovery, like pain splitting Rotom, or recovering Milotic, or synthesizing Shaman. It can take on those relatively well, or it can shut them down a little bit. Preventing Milotic from getting those recovers off is very, very useful. I went with will o -Wisp because this set can take on Bishop relatively well. It hasn't got an item because it's an acrobatic set, so knockoff won't be doing as much. Resists the Iron Head and I can Wisp the Bishop by naturally outspeeding it without any investment. So that's really cool. Really like this Talonflame and I'm really excited to try it out. I like um, the versatility that Talonflame brings. A lot of people just see it as a sweeper, but it's definitely not just that. It's a lot more and I'm very, very happy with this set to be bringing it. Uh, the next thing I wanted was a switch in for Milotic. Milotic was almost guaranteed to be coming because it's so great at what it does and I just thought that it would be coming so I decided to bring Fat Sork the Hariyama. It's a Guts Hariyama with the Assault Vest, an easy switch in on Scold and it does a lot of damage. If it gets burned nothing is a switch in. Uh, Thunder Punch just so I don't drop my defenses by going for an attack against Milotic or Mandibuzz or stuff like that. Close Combat is a, uh, just a nuke and Bullet Punch I put on there purely as an answer to Gardevoir that could otherwise do quite a lot of damage to my team. I have the specially defensive um, Talonflame though which could potentially handle it uh, but Bullet Punch does huge damage to Gardevoir so that's great. And then the final mon, which is kind of the glue, but also the thing that's taking down a few mons that I almost, I, I was almost certain were coming, um, was my Jirachi. And this set, I am, I'm, I'm quite, I was quite happy going into it. It was a bit weird, and I wasn't sure if it was going to work. But I thought that the Pokemon that it was designed to try to have fun with, I thought that they were definitely coming. So I thought it would do something. Um, so I'll show you that set now. Um, and so yeah, the star of the show basically. Uh, Hacks Jesus. Uh, this set was designed to one, kill Donphan, because I want to kill Donphan. With the Grass Knot, it does huge damage to it. Two, maybe kill Milotic. I've got Substitute on there, and the weird EVs are for the HP and Special Defense means that an uninvested Milotic Scold uh, definitely will not break my Substitute. So with Substitute and Grass Knot there, I can potentially beat Milotic. Um, so that's really good. And three, I can lure in Bishop to maybe try and revenge. With my speed, I outspeed Jolly Bishop. And with my special attack, I Oko with an uninvested Bishop um, in terms of bulk with hidden power fighting. So that was the plan. That was, well, that was the plan of an easy KO on Bishop. It could get messy otherwise, relying on my Blastoise or maybe even Harry Armour to take an Iron Head. I'm not sure if it can do that. Or maybe an Earthquake from my Tyrantrum that does also outspeed. Flash Cannon could have been a number of different things, but Flash Cannon, uh, Flash Cannon could have been Psy Shock to hit Gudra and to do a bit more damage to Rotom, um, but I decided Flash Cannon as something else to hit Gardevoir because I was a bit scared of that, 
and also it hits mandibles, which I could otherwise have a little bit of trouble with. Um, but that's basically the weird Jirachi set. It's a sub lefties uh, attacking set with a lot of bulk and some speed. <laughs> it's, just, it's a bit complicated, but there was reasoning behind it. So that's the team, and that's enough talking for now. I'm definitely going to go in straight into the action and into the battle. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. So here we are, looking at the team that RTK brought. It's pretty much exactly what I thought he might, just because Donphan had to be brought. Bishop does a lot of damage to my team. Rotom's there for uh, my Talon Flame, and then just a strong Water, Grass, Fire Core, and then Gardevoir was interchangeable with maybe Gudra and stuff, so I wasn't exactly sure that was coming, but Gardevoir was there, and I have prep for it. That's a good sign. I kind of thought that my prep has gone in the right direction so that's great i wanted to lead off with blastoise just because if he leads with Domfan trying to get the rocks i'll have to switch straight into blastoise anyway anything else i've got relatively good switches into his best lead probably would have been um the guard of war just because my switches into that aren't as great if yeah they're just not as good um so his best matchup is guard of war but i really didn't think that he would lead guard of war um so i thought the blastoise was a very good lead to go with um so let's just get into the battle now um i just want to say i would like to record this like live to do the post con with just so i have more time to talk but my uh my capture card is playing up so i won't be able to do that for now um, so this is just post, this is a post recorded. He leads with Rotom, and that's not a great matchup for my Blastoise, but I have a good switch in in my Nidoqueen, Queen, and that's actually great because it allows me to get up my hazards straight away. So I'm very happy with this. Um, the Rotom does just go for Volt Switch, which is fine, and I'm gonna put my, uh, I'm gonna get up my Toxic Spikes straight away. I was a bit worried he'd switch into Donphan and get a free Rapid Spin straight away, which wouldn't be ideal because I want that Donphan poisoned. But actually the Milotic comes in, which is fine with me. I've got my Scold Absorber in Harry Armor, and then I'll be able to threaten with the uh, close combat and maybe get that poison on the Don fan if it wants to come in. Uh, Milotic does go for Scold, and it gets the burn straight away, which is all right because it means that nothing is gonna want to switch in right now. Like literally nothing can take these attacks. But at the same time, Harry Armor is gonna get whittled very quickly and it's it, that is a bit of a shame because it means I won't have a very long-lived scold switch in. Anyway, Gardevoir comes in, gets poisoned and it's coming in to take the close combat that is coming. This is quad resisted and it does like just under half. It's pretty amazing. Uh, and I, I am carrying the bullet punch as I said before. So uh, from that point with the guts boost, bullet, po bullet punch is definitely going to take out this Gardevoir. Uh, I am going to go for it. We see lefties on the Gardevoir too. That's interesting. I wasn't sure if he might want to bring a Scarf set, but it's good to know the item on that. Uh, I am just going to go for the Bullet Punch. RTK makes a really good play scouting for that and going into his Dom fan. Um, so that's a really good switch for him. I'm not going to be doing very much damage at all with this Bullet Punch. Dom, Dom fan has great uh, defense. I'm not sure if this is a physically defensive set or if it's got kind of attack investment or whatever. Uh, I don't really want to stay in here. Uh, because I've already got a defense drop and rocks might be coming my way, so I want to switch straight into my Blastoise. It can take an Earthquake if that's what he goes for, and it's really one of the main roles that my Blastoise has right now. It means that I can get up the Mega as well if he stays in. Um, so he doesn't go for a double, he does just go for an Earthquake there, getting damage off on my Blastoise, but Blastoise does take that relatively well. And that's even before the Mega Evolution where I'll get even more defense. Uh, so that's great. I'm just going to be able to get my Mega off here. He didn't go for Rock, so I, that means I'm free to Scold. I don't have to Rapid Spin. Um, but he's got plenty of good Scold switch-ins. Um, he actually goes into Milotic here, Venustus, um, which is going to get poisoned, which is fantastic for me. Something I didn't really think about in prep was um, the aspect of uh, Marvel Scale that it now gets which means that Head Smash won't be doing as much damage to this Milotic, so I need to whittle it a bit more uh, than I would do. But I think the poison is going to help with that anyway, so it's kind of a trade-off that I won't be doing as much damage, but it will be at lower health because of the poison. We see a crit there. don't think that really mattered in the long run. Um, you'll see why in, a, in later on. I, I, it's just not a huge crit really there. Um, but yeah, the Malatik's getting a bit whittled. I'm going to go straight back into my Scold switch in, which is my uh, Hariyama. Already taken over half health just really from that burn damage. Because uh, you're seeing here, Scold does... Scold does 40, but when you've got as much health as Hariyama has, that's not really that much. Burn damage is probably doing more or about the same as that. 
So I'm going to be able to fire off another very powerful hit. Yeah, it's doing it's doing about the same as Scald is doing anyway. Um, yeah, so there aren't really any uh, there aren't really any switch ins as we've already seen, and the Hariyama is gonna I mean the Donphan is gonna try and take this hit from the Hariyama. This is potentially the only bit of hacks that may matter in the match. Um, I get a crit there, which means the Donphan just goes down. If that's a physically defensive Donphan, I haven't done the calcs. It might have lived. I don't know. It might not. This guy is really powerful. But because I take it out in one, I live the burn damage, and this guy is still around. Rather than if I had to hit him again, this guy would have gone down to burn. What I can do here is now preserve my Hariyama as death fodder, or maybe trying to get a bullet punch off on something later on. Um, so it, that crit maybe mattered a little bit, but... Um, not huge as well because I was going to take out the Donphan. Anyway, uh, Shaman comes in. I switch into my Shaman switch in because rocks aren't up. Talonflame can come in freely and uh, uh, he goes for an Earth Power so he's not going to be able to see my item. That means that he'll want to switch out. I predict the switch into Rotom because uh, Rotom is obviously there for my uh, Talonflame and I go right into my Nidor Queen, which means that I can get up my rocks. Now Donphan's down. Rocks and Toxic Spikes are here to stay. That's great. Want the rocks up to whittle the Rotom because it'll want to switch in on my Talonflame. Uh, and he still doesn't know that I'm more of a def uh, defensive Talonflame rather than an offensive Talonflame. So he'll still want to switch in the Rotom on the Talonflame. Um, so that's good for me. Um, we see here that Milotic comes in again, it's taking even more poison damage and I, at this point is where I can sack Hariyama. So this is where the crit comes into play, it just means that I've got free death fodder really. I'd have to play around a bit more if I didn't, but you can see it's not crucial. Um, it just helps with my momentum here because now Hariyama's gone down, I can go into Jirachi and this is kind of the exact situation I was trying to engineer with this Jirachi set. Coming in for free on a Milotic, which cannot break my sub as long as it's got no uh, special attack investment. Even if it does, it, it doesn't stand a great chance of breaking my sub. So I'm going to sub up here, and the Milotic's going to go for a Scold, and it's not going to break the sub, which is fantastic. I can get some lefties recovery and just go for a grass knot. I'm surprised at this point that the Milotic has not gone for, gone for a recover, and I would kind of expect it to now, although it could be a bit risky. He, he doesn't know my spread at the moment, um, but seeing as though Scold hasn't broken the sub, I'm guessing he thinks I'm more of a uh, bulky set, so uh, that's a good thing. Anyway, I get the grass knot damage off. It does a, a lot of damage. Uh, basically, with that and the poison damage after leftovers, it's doing about 50%, so recovering won't be a good tactic for this Milotic anyway. It does break my sub, and we're going to see here that with the lefties recovery, it's actually just going to survive the poison damage, which is kind of a good thing for me, because what that means is that I can get to sub again. If it had gone down to that poison there, then Bisharp could have come in and tried to pursuit trap me or something like that. But in this situation, I get to sub. He actually goes for the Scold, thinking maybe he could go for the recover there. It would be a bit pointless, seeing as I can just go for two Grass Knots to take it out uh, behind my sub. And it, that would be a uh, dead Milotic, and I'd still be behind my sub. So it, it didn't really matter. He just got damage on the sub there. But his Milotic is going to go down, which is fantastic for me. Really good. That was one of, because it was poison, that was one of the things that could have taken on my Tyrantrum. But now the Milotic's gone, the Donphan's gone, Tyrantrum's looking absolutely fantastic. Um, and I've got a Jirachi behind a sub, which is great. Now, here, this is like a questionable play because. Uh, RTK brings in Gardevoir, obviously thinking that I'm a more bulky set seeing as though my, my subs are taking the Scolds. Uh, but actually I do have enough speed uh, to outspeed Bisharps, Jolly Bisharps and obviously modest Gardevoirs as well. So I was willing to risk that. Um, he was actually wanting to go for the Destiny Bond which would have taken me out behind my sub but you can see he didn't outspeed. My Flash Cannon is enough to take that down. Um, and that's a good reason for running Flash Cannon. I was, I was debating a Psychic type attack, but I wouldn't have been able to take out that Gardevoir. So that was really good on my part. Anyway, Rotom comes in now, and I can't do too much to it. Hidden Power would have done more damage there, but I didn't want to reveal that I had a Hidden Power. Um, so I just went for Flash Cannon, maybe getting a special defense drop so that if I had to switch into Nidor Queen, 
Uh, a lower special defense on the Rotom would help me out. But he actually goes for the Volt Switch to break my sub and brings in the Bishop. And this is fantastic. This is exactly what I wanted to lure in. He thinks that I can't really touch it, maybe. Or he thinks that he'll force me out. I'm actually going to stay in. I know that I'll outspeed unless he is Scarfed, which he is not. I can go for that Hidden Power. And it does indeed Oko the Bishop. It was not invested in bulk. That Jirachi set has just worked wonders. It's done exactly what I EV'd it to do. And with that spread, it's fantastic. So happy with this Jirachi. Um, yeah, really happy. I can't believe it worked to perfection. Lured in the Bishop and killed it. Killed the Milotic. Um, was a check to the Gardevoir. It just worked really well. I'm going to save it. I don't want Jirachi to go down, even though it wouldn't die to an Earth Power. But I don't think I'll be able to kill the Shaman either. So I'm going to go into my... A uh, really safe switch in Talon Flame, able to take anything, even a hidden power rock from uh, Shaman. I'm thinking the Shaman might be Scarf at this point. I was wondering what thing would be Scarf. It's not the Rotom, it's not the Gardevoir. Thinking it's probably the Shaman. Anyway, um, I'm going to threaten out that Shaman and actually just go for a taunt, predicting the Rotom to come in. I don't want it to be able to rest or pain split or anything like that after all the hard work making it switch in on the rocks and things. Keep it low, that's what I want to do. Uh, and right now I've got the really easy switch back into my Nidor Queen. That's my designated switch for this Rotom. If it goes for an overheat, I can take that. We're seeing that it's more of a defensive build, so I'll easily be able to eat it up. Um, he actually gets a crit here and it only just does over half, which is so great. And with the special attack drop, it's really not going to be able to do anything to my Nidor Queen, which is great. Uh, I did actually speed creep on this Nidor Queen, so I outspeed a, an uninvested Rotom, and you see that come into play here. I do outspeed the Rotom. It's not really crucial because he won't be able to be doing any damage to me anyway, because uh, because I am very specially bulky. Uh, but I do outspeed, so I can just get off uh, another Sludge Wave here. He's only got this and Shaman left, and so Shaman definitely can't switch into a Sludge Wave. And Shaman, Scarf Shaman presumably being his last hope, although obviously I've still got Talon Flame in the back, so it's not really going to work out for him. So uh, this this is going to be wrapped up pretty easily. I do want to save Differential. I'm currently, uh, currently Hariyama is the only thing of mine that's fainted. Um, the Shaman will probably be able to, even though my Nidor Queen's especially bulky, I'm going to switch it out because I want to preserve Differential. I don't think I'll be able to take a Seed Flare or an Earth Power. So I'm going to go back into my Talonflame because I think Seed Flare is probably the best thing to lock itself into if it is a Scarf set. Um, as, as I say, I can even take a Hidden Power Rock from there because I'm specially defensive. So um, Shaman wasn't really going to be able to do anything. I would have been able to switch in on anything with this Talonflame and just go for the Acrobatics. A an animation I absolutely love, by the way. It looks so much better than Brave Bird. Brave Bird is pretty epic though, but I just really like that. That's so cool. It's so like, just very clean animation. And that will be the first match of the PPL for Newcastle United and a massive 5-0 victory. Very happy with that performance. Um, I do think that I had a pretty good match up here because I have quite an offensive team, whereas RTK had a very bulk based team uh, looking for synergy and stuff. So. Uh, it was quite predictable uh, in terms of what he brought and I prepared the, for the right thing. So that's very reassuring for me. Basically, just very reassuring in general. Uh, a very good performance and I can't believe that Jirachi worked so well. It was a weird set. I thought I was, yeah, maybe overthinking it, but no, it did exactly what I wanted it to. The only thing that didn't do what I wanted it to was Tyr Tyrantrum that didn't even hit the field and it was the thing that I thought would just bring the pain. It did absolutely nothing. Um, but it was there in the back if I needed it, which is really, really good. Yeah, everything else worked great. I mean, uh, yeah, Blastoise put pressure on and was there for Rapid Spin if I needed it. Nidor Queen got all those hazards up and basically um, pressured the Dom fan, which went down very early. Harry Armor was a Scold switch in, um, worked great. Talonflame, the Shaman switch in, worked great as well. Jirachi, obviously amazing. So very, very happy with the team. Um, it's kind of made me feel like I haven't mucked up so much. Uh, not that I did, I just thought, uh, yeah, my draft is weird and I wasn't sure I'd be able to play it as I wanted it to, or as I wanted to, but this is reassuring and saying I'm definitely going in the right direction. So uh, definitely check out RTK, I'll link his video in the description so you can see his side. And uh, next week we'll be going on to 
fight Necro Stevo, and that's going to be a really good battle too. So watch out for that. I hope that you are rooting for Newcastle United. I hope you see the potential. I have been Fufu, you have been awesome, and hopefully see you next time. Goodbye.